Hi, thanks for joining us. My name is Phil. I'm a corporate systems engineer here at AGI, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to do things with mega constellations in SDK. Uh, I say mega constellations. Some people say large constellations. It's the same thing. Uh, there's some debate in the industry right now about whether to say mega or large, but it's all the same thing. It's all the same constellations you've been reading about. So let's go ahead and get started. I've got SDK opened up here, and right off the bat, you can see that I've got a facility over here. Uh, so this is where we're going to be looking at the potential impact of interference from a mega constellation with a geostationary satellite uh, from the perspective of a satellite trying to communicate with a ground station at this place. Uh, so this is located at AGI headquarters in Exton, Pennsylvania, but that's notional. You could have a place situated anywhere. Uh, so to go ahead and get started, uh, the workflow with mega constellations or large constellations is a little bit different than what you might be used to with other satellite constellations in SDK. Uh, you're dealing with large numbers of objects, sometimes uh, in the thousands. And so some of you may be familiar with the Walker tool, but what we're going to be using today is something called a multi-track object. Now, multi-track objects are a special kind of object in SDK. I'm gonna go ahead and open up the insert object menu over here and insert one by defining properties, just so I can walk you guys through a little bit of what's going on. So. You'll see here when you insert into a multi-track object that you'll have it pop up in the object browser on the left. And you'll notice that there's a blank menu over here that has ID, start time, stop time, interpolate, and the name. So multi-track objects, uh, quite conveniently, are just objects that are composed of multiple tracks, vehicle tracks. So it doesn't have to be satellites. It could be aircraft, it could be ground vehicles, boats, any kind of object that moves through space and time, uh, we can track with multi-track object. However, uh, you cannot do the kind of detailed analysis and uh, computation that you might be used to with other SDK objects using an MTO. Uh, these are only visual objects. You can do certain kinds of analysis, but because of the visual only uh, effect of these objects, you need to work around that. Luckily, there are ways that we can do that. So to start off, I had a pre-populated list of two line element files that I can use to populate my multi-track object for the large constellation. And I'll show you guys what that looks like uh, right here. So all these green dots over here, and I'll go ahead and animate it so you can see how it moves. These are accurate representations of the tracks, the trajectories of these satellite objects. Now I got these tracks from, as I mentioned, they're two-line element files. And if you have a collection of two-line elements, you can import those as multi-track objects using the uh, connect command. So I just brought up a scenario that I've been working on before uh, to show you guys a little bit more about what you can do on the communication side of analysis. And of course, the analysis that you can do with mega constellations has a wide range. You can do communications analysis like I have. There's also conjunction analysis and EOIR analysis uh, that you could do with SDK, all sorts of different things uh, pertaining to mega constellations. So what I've got here is I have a geostationary satellite communicating with a ground facility in Washington, DC. And that's just an arbitrarily picked location and an arbitrary uh, space asset. This geosatellite is representative of geosatellites in general, but not particular to anyone. Uh, and I've got a whole host of satellites here from my mega constellation, but you'll notice that I don't have the entire mega constellation loaded in as satellites. And like I was saying earlier, that's a lot for SDK to handle, especially when you have thousands of satellites. And what I did was I used a deck access tool feature to be able to narrow down uh, the mega constellation and figure out which satellites specifically I could see over my analysis period from the ground station. So that allowed me to narrow down, filter it out to the satellites that I care about. And the way you do that is you just go over to the ground station or facility or place that you care about. And you click on the deck access feature here. And if you have a list of the trajectories or the two line elements of these satellites, uh, you can actually use that. Uh, so I can load in the TLEs that I care about, and then create a file that you can then parse, a text file that you can use a programming interface like Python or scripting language like MATLAB, Perl, to actually parse through and pick out the satellites that are in that report. So this will just show you what your ground facility or place can see over the course of, for instance, a 10 minute or 10 hour or 10 day window uh, from the mega constellation. So that's how you do that filtering process from the visual objects, and then you can then uh, collect those two line elements or the trajectories into a separate file and load those in as satellites into SDK. But since I've already done that, I'm just going to go off of the ones that I've already got 
And uh, you can see here that I've got the sensor cone or the communications cone of my ground facility and the link between that and the geostationary satellite. I'm also going to go ahead and show you guys what I've done to actually analyze the potential interference impact of the mega constellation uh, between that communications link of the geostationary satellite and the ground station. So I brought in a comm system object, and that allowed me to define a transmission, a reception, and an interference constellation, and then measure the potential interference impact of that uh, mega constellation. So I defined the transmitters of the uh, mega constellation satellites to be the interferers. The receiver is just the ground facility uh, antenna, and then the transmitter is the transmitter that's attached to my geostationary satellite. And that brings in some pretty interesting results. Uh, not least of all, if I pull up this graph here and change the time second to so or time step to something a little bit more fine tuned, you can see here that this is a graph of the carrier to noise wave in black and then the carrier to noise plus interference in pink. Uh, so the interference is the uh, impact of the mega constellation in that communications link. So the nominal communications link without, cons without the mega constellation or large constellation interference impact is in black. And you'll notice that the interferers add some pretty significant effects here with these large troughs in uh, signal quality. And that's due to when the satellites are flying directly overhead or between the geostationary satellite and the ground receiver. And you'll notice that it's not an insignificant period of time. So this is all over the course of 10 minutes, as you can see here on the x-axis or horizontal axis. Uh, and each trough is at least 20, sometimes 30 seconds long. Uh, that's due to the fact that I've set my satellite transmitters or on the uh, large constellation satellites to have a pretty significant bandwidth uh, or a data rate. Because uh, a lot of these internet service provider constellations that are being proposed are boasting that they'll be able to deliver one gigabit or up to 10 gigabit per second downlink uh, data rates of internet speed. And that's great, especially if you're using their internet. But that does have the end result of increasing the bandwidth of their signal and causing these large uh, or rather wide uh, interference troughs here. And you can see here with the comm system that all the links between the satellites that have access or line of sight to my ground facility are in yellow, the interferer uh, links. The transmission link between the geostationary satellite and the ground facility is here in green. And if I zoom in here, you'll notice a red link between one of the satellites. If I go ahead and turn off the sensor there, you'll notice this red link here. And that's denoting the link between the primary interferer of the uh, mega constellation satellites at this point in time. Uh, so that which is causing the most interference out of all the mega constellation satellites. So that's another great feature of the comm system object is that it gives you that visual representation of which object is causing the most interference at any given point in time. And that is a dynamic, uh, dynamically updated uh, thing. So you can see here, if I go ahead and restart my scenario, you'll see that this red link is actually switching between satellites as different satellites pass overhead and go out of view.